In this vertical alignment example, we're given a table with information and we're asked to determine the elevation of the endpoint of the vertical alignment and draw the layout of the alignment and label each component. This is an actual project, so we'll take a look at the actual design file when we're finished with this. And we are given some information in the description as well. We're told that the project begins at station 11 plus 50 and that initial grade is 4%. And station 11 plus 50 also has an elevation of 360 feet. We're also told that the project ends at station 50. So we're looking, one of the key things we're looking for, we are asked to find the elevation at this endpoint. So one of the key parts is finding the elevation at station 50. And we're also going to draw this alignment and label the key points. We're given information on 11 different curves labeled C1 through C11. Each, for each of these curves, we're given a PVC and a PVT. And we'll solve this uh, in a following slide, but one of the things that's important for us to remember for vertical curves is that the PVI is in the middle of the PVC and PVT. And by in the middle, I mean exactly in the middle. So half the length is going to be on each side of the PVI, from the PVC to the PVI and the PVI to the PVT. So that's an important relationship that we'll use in solving this problem. And we're also given the exit grade for each curve. And we're only given the exit grades because one curve's exit grade becomes the next curve's entrance grade. And that's why the problem statement gives us the first grade of 4%. So for curve one, if we were to add a column here for entrance grade, we're going to use that 4.0% here. And then all the following curves are going to use the previous curves exit grade to be the entrance grade. So that's why we only need this one column for uh, the exit grades because the relationship with entrance and exit grades as these curves follow each other. So take a minute, pause this video, work out this problem on your own, and then restart it and take a look at the solution. So this table is my solution is one solution of how to lay out solving this problem. There's obviously multiple ways you can do it. So don't worry too much if your solution doesn't look exactly like this one. I tried to sp split up the curve and the tangent pieces so that we can look at these separately. Some information doesn't isn't really necessary to show here, uh, but I showed it for uh, the purpose of illustrating this problem. So another thing that is added in here are the tangents. So we see there's two types of components. We have the curve component, and that's essentially what we saw from the table. And then connecting those curves, we have tangents because the roadway does have tangents in between those curves. So we try to represent the full spectrum of this layout, this vertical alignment with these two different components, tangents and curves. And those tangents and curves are separated in this table into two sections. So to begin with, we had T1, the first tangent. It started at station 11 plus 50, and it went, it went until the first curve, curve one with a PVC, PVC station of 13 plus 20, so that was added in here. All the cells with a green background are the given information, and then the other cells are the things we are calculating. So the length of that first curve, we're going to subtract those two stations, is going to have a length of, of 1.7 stations, 170 feet. We were given the beginning elevation of 360 feet, and if you move 170 feet at a 4% grade, you will end up at 366.8 feet. And you can see that same pattern throughout the tangents. I'm not going to work through the math in all of those, but you can follow along in that type of thinking or those calculations for each of those tangents. Looking at the first curve, so going here to curve C1, we, we were given the PVC and PVT stations. The PVI is going to be 
immediately in between those, so a curve that's 160 feet long, 1.6 stations. We get that from subtracting the PVC from the PVT. We know that the PVI is going to be in the middle, so the PVI of curve 1 is, a, is at station 14. We also, by moving along the grade, we can use the end of the tangent elevation to be the elevation of our PVC. So that's how we get the 366.8. We're going to go another 80 feet or half the length along that grade to get the elevation of the PVI. So that's how we get the PVI elevation of 370 feet. And then we're going to take the exit grade to find the PVT elevation. So it 80 feet moving along a grade of 4.48% is going to give us a PVT elevation of 373.58 feet. So that's how we find our stations and elevations for our curves. And again, that pattern is going to continue until we reach our end point. We were told that our end point is at station 50. That also happens to be the PVT of curve 11. And so the, the final answer for what we were looking for here is 496.21 feet. So that's the overall solution to this problem. And you get there by going from tangent to curve, curve to tangent, moving along this alignment. So we're going to, the way we set this up in the table, moving from the columns on the right to the columns on the left and back and forth as we go from curve to tangent uh, in this vertical alignment. So again, the final solution is 496.21 feet at the end of our vertical alignment, station 50. So we can also take a look at the actual design. So if we were actually drawing this alignment, we could come up with something that's similar to this. This is the actual design that was used for the project, and we should see a lot of the same values that we calculated. So for instance, this first curve has a PI at station 14, an elevation of 370. The vertical curve length is 160 feet. So those are all things that we saw from our calculations from the previous table. We also can see our actual grades drawn on here. So our entrance grade for curve one is 4%. Our exit grade is 4.48%. And as we looked through that initial table, we saw this, that there weren't many changes between these vertical curves in terms of the entrance and exit grade. So these are very slight vertical curves, almost imperceptible. The second curve has a PI at station 16 plus 50, an elevation of 381.2, and it has a length of 210 feet. This first section takes us from station 10 through station 18. Our next set goes from station 18 to 31, and again, we can see, continue to see that trend where there are vertical curves, but they're very slight vertical curves. The existing ground is, the existing terrain is this dashed line, and the solid line is our actual design as we move into these further curves, so curve three and curve four, and so on as we move through this alignment. If you'd like to look at the full design files, you can go to this link here at the bottom of the screen to look at those PDF files. We're going to continue along this alignment. We have our next curves, and then finally on our last section, we start to see some grades that look much different from each other. So starting on the final sheet here, station 42, to the end point here at 50 and actually shows a little bit further than this all the way to what would be station 52. So we see here a curve that has a positive grade that goes into a negative grade. So a traditional crest type vertical curve has a PI at station 44 plus 75 that has an elevation and a elevation of 
519.7 and a length of 320 feet. And our final answer that we're looking for here is the end station, station 50, which as we saw for has an elevation of 496.21 is our final answer for this problem.